the gaps in our spiritual understanding um, is what is largely responsible for the fluctuations in our results. Knowledge is responsible for dominion in this kingdom. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that if you must shine, you must arise and then shine only because your light is come. So there is a relationship between knowledge, even sufficient knowledge, and dominion. That means every area where you are bankrupt of dominion, that most likely may be an area where you have zero or incomplete or even inaccurate spiritual knowledge. Hallelujah. That means as light comes, you expect to begin to walk in dominion. And last week, God granted us grace and we dealt a bit with... Um, freedom from financial captivity and i did tell you that it was not really about money at all it was helping us to understand the dynamics of the kingdom as far as um commanding or the manifesting the blessing of the lord is concerned and i'm hoping and praying that their testimony is already from that teaching and it will come by listening. You can always go to our social media platforms, YouTube, get the teaching, listen to it again. Now for your transformation. True riches. Luke chapter 16. I'll begin my reading from verse 11. Jesus is instructing us now. And he was teaching about faithfulness. Remember, was teaching about faithfulness. And his context was with regards to financial or regards to resources now money as you know and he said if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon he says who will commit to your trust the true riches verse 12 and if ye have been not been faithful in that which is another man's who shall give you that which is your own? Let's go back to verse 11. I wish we could read that in Amplified. And he's teaching something about, it says, Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the case of unrighteous mammon, and he calls it deceitful riches, money, possessions, it says, who will entrust to you true riches? So in the mind of Jesus, what you call riches or money, or possessions material possessions is a product and that there is another kind of capital that can buy that product and Jesus gives us the name of that capital that buys what we call money he calls it true riches that money in scripture is called unrighteous mammon or deceitful riches. Do you know why? Because it seems to be stubborn. It seems to always want to go away and run away from the hands of its owners. So you find people today who are blessed financially as we know. And then next moment something happens and they're in a, a very sorry state. And so the conclusion is that money on its own is, is, decept, is deceptive and then money is unrighteous. It does not have stability. There is no quality of faithfulness in it. It can run away. In fact, Proverbs says that it will grow wings and fly away. Hallelujah. True riches. This was a revelation that the Lord gave me that changed my life tremendously. 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 This completely altered my perception because, like you know, I made up my mind that as much as possible, I would not manipulate God's people. And I didn't want to do the kind of ministry where God's people would only grow spiritually, vibrant, loving the Lord, but then their needs would not be met. That the quality of the lives of their children. I hope you know that um, when you study the subject of influence and dominion, among the many indices that command influence and dominion is wealth. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us. And he mentioned seven things and one of it is riches. You can never get to the corridors of dominion in poverty. The concept of poverty or having material blessings is not a concept that the Bible is silent about. Jesus himself, the author and the finisher of our faith, was very, very detailed. He talked about 
the subject of possession, resources. Are we together? The fact that it was the will of God, but also the dangers that would come to the life of a person, whether you have resources without knowledge or you have the bankruptcy of those resources. And any responsible ministry should be able to help God's people to understand the kingdom's way to being blessed financially or in terms of material possessions. And the Lord just put it in my heart to continue from where we left off last week. And I will go straight to the point because I hope that we'll have some time to pray. Um, so, please look up. In business, most of us here, everybody I presume, um, would have had one kind of business encounter or the other. We daily, we go to the market to buy things, we buy products, and um, or most of us here have jobs, most of us here entrepreneurs, we run all kinds of businesses, and some of us very successfully so. And so the, 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 the concept of transaction is not something that is new to anybody who has been, you know, on the earth for a while, particularly if you've been in Nigeria and Africa, the concept of, um, because we are still a cash society, in other developed nations, they, they, they are almost cashless, and so the concept of exchange is very, very, is very advanced. But in Nigeria here, we understand almost like the barter system. Um, and I'm saying that because I want you to understand what it means when the Bible talks about true riches. This was a revelation that God gave me. Many people are unable to prosper in the kingdom because most people do not know the factors that control true kingdom prosperity. And now, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not, I'm not an expert, a, a professor in finance and economics. I'm teaching you kingdom economics here. And so my, my reference, it doesn't mean I'm ignorant as to understanding the financial system of the cosmos. I'm just saying that when it has to do with communicating this perspective, our reference is largely scripture. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. So, um, I'm going to use three people to do an illustration. Can I have, let me just use my people or ushers. Three of you, please come, gentlemen. Thank you. Just, just stand here. Hallelujah. So you hold my Bible. Mr. Kayo, do you stand here? Watch this. Everybody, please watch this. Please lift it up. And this is what I want to teach you tonight. I'm summarizing my message. Now, call this a product. This product can be anything. A car, a house, any material thing at all. In our world, we have been taught, rightfully so, that anytime you want a product, you need money. Am I right on that? Yes. So, if I want to buy this from Minisakayo Day's store or mall or whatever it is, I can't walk there and just brag and boast and carry a basket, fill it up, and tell them stories at the counter. Are we together now? So, I must ensure that I have money. So, let's assume that I have some money. Whatever price this is, I can confidently walk to him. He's not going to ask me how old am I in most cases. Is that true? He will not ask whether I'm a male or female. He will not ask whether I'm from the north, south, east, and west. Once I have the money, that means if I want you to have more of this, what do I give you? More money. Are we together now? Now, for, from the natural perspective, will you be offended if I bring out money? Can we use money? All right, so let's bring out... At least let me bring out a hundred dollar bill. Hold this, please. Just lift it up. Watch this. Are we sitting down? He's holding a hundred dollar bill. And if he wants this, what does he need to do? He will have to exchange it. Is that true? So he will receive this for the money. If he wants another product, he will still have to bring another money. So the more of this he has the more his potential to be able to exchange for the things that he needs. Am I right on that? Now, our understanding largely is that this is the ultimate of everything. 
so the moment you have money like we know and we call it you are excited because now you have the ability is that true we call it purchasing power is that true yes you have the ability to purchase this now but Jesus is introducing something very interesting that even this thing you call money is also a product and that when you want it is bought and there is another kind of capital that can buy it are you getting the point now so follow me now if you want to buy this product physical product whatever it is you need money is that true dollars here or whatever currency you use but if you need money he's saying that money itself is a product it is bought the name of the capital that buys this money is called true riches that means when God wants to give you more of this it is not this he gives you there is something he gives you that when you have more of it guarantees that you can have this then you can use this to have this are we together now but that that true riches is so powerful that even if you don't have this you don't need to worry if you have that because that true riches can bring you the money that can bring you whatever it is you want to do are we together